This is a true attack of familial hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. Triggers for this attack were a high-carbohydrate meal and exercise without premedication. The patient in this video is a physician and is being analytical through the attack. This attack was amongst the most severe he has had. He is able to speak and is going to lead you through what it's like to be paralyzed. I've woken up and I'm paralyzed. The first thing that I do is try to figure out how severe is the attack. At least I have my arms, but my hands are, are very weak, so it's, it's really, I can't even open a bottle of water right now, so that means I can't put my medicine in the water, so that's a problem. Uh, and, you know, so now I need to basically call for help because it can only potentially get worse. Well, hopefully I don't have to go to the bathroom, first of all. Uh, sometimes I wake up and I have a little more movement, and so then I can make it to the bathroom, make it to the medicine, call for help plop back into bed. For some reason I woke up and I was too paralyzed to do that. Um, so I just have to lie here and basically wait for someone to find me. Once it resolves, I'm gonna need to sleep it off because all my muscles are gonna feel like they're torn up, like uh, like I just did a, a big weightlifting exercise. Um, and, uh, and then of course you go to work late, people aren't gonna believe you because they don't understand what this is. Luckily I can, you know, kind of sort it. There, get to my side, and I probably want to stay on my side at this point if I do even feel the remote possibility of uh, throwing up, because then at least I won't choke to death. Typically, individuals who suffer from periodic paralysis have medication, sometimes pre-mixed, at the bedside, and a phone or other means of calling for help. Here we see typical efforts at movement with a great degree of difficulty. When one attempts this alone, Injury, like a twisted ankle, can easily occur. What's worse now is I fell asleep over the covers and it's cold, and the cold just makes it worse. So ideally, I, I'd like to be covered, and I can't even cover myself right now. I'm just stuck here. I really can't move anything right now at all. I'm very severely paralyzed, so I really need you, Ed, to pull my arm up. You got to pull my my right hand towards the uh, mirror you're gonna have to get towards that side because you need leverage and then Frank you're gonna get my legs having a cooperative individual to lend assistance is key subtle angles create pressure on joints the patient is using ergonomic angles to support himself it is his joints not muscles that are supporting the patient there are risks of moving someone while paralyzed it can hurt or injure the patient, especially if they are non-verbal. Moving a patient must be decided upon a case-by-case -case basis. Note that the patient in the video is dependent on the people around him for both physical and psychological support. Okay, and now I need to get the medicine in me. So you see how I can talk and I can breathe, but I can't move, and this is extremely distressing. The patient is now taking potassium chloride dissolved in water in an effort to reverse the attack. At least I have my neck. Sometimes I don't have my neck, and then, I, uh, then I'm really stuck. And I think that will happen to me if I don't have the medicine in me. Now, if I drink this fast, what happens is you can get a gas bubble, a sensation that you want to throw up or burp or something. And so I just have to let it happen. Dosing varies for patient to patient. The patient is taking his prescribed amount. If I take little by little, it doesn't work. I need to get a bunch of potassium in the bloodstream quickly to reverse the, what's going on with the ion channels. Some people underdose themselves and they'll be in this condition for longer than necessary. Now it's extremely tiring for me to stay up like this. At the same time, I don't want to lie down. So what I need to do is to, can you adjust my feet so that they're both on the floor? And then I want to put my elbows on my knees. And let me lean forward a little bit. Okay, this is kind of okay. The, the, see, there's no position that's comfortable right now, unfortunately. So now I'm cold, and um, 
I would like to put my arm so that I can... Mm -hmm. Here, the attack is getting worse, as seen by more laboured speech and troubled disposition. I want to lean on Frank. So pull me back up. And... Fuck. Let me lean forward a little bit. And let me lean on Frank. Mm -hmm. For unclear reasons, be it the episode itself, the quick intake of medication, or just the medication itself, the patient has become severely nauseated. Excuse me. The patient is too paralyzed for his abdominal muscles to help him vomit. It's only the muscles in his stomach and esophagus that allows the material to evacuate the body. Had the patient been lying on his back, he could have aspirated and choked with potentially fatal consequences. The problem now is yes. that my medication yeah. is now on the floor. Yeah, and not in the stomach. That's good. If he doesn't get covered and keep the muscles warm, it can worsen the episode. At some point, I'd like to have someone support an arm fully across my chest so that, like, but then with support so that I'm actually leaning on you. And or my head because my neck's getting real tired from... My, or, so put it, not, I'm not, I'm sorry, not my neck, my forehead. More, yeah. I'm not going to lay down. I'm going to have to sit like this for a while. Yeah, okay. And since I'm shivering, mm -hmm. you know, there's some parasympathetic something going on, so I just want to take it easy. Mm -hmm. So I just have to relax here and stuff. No, I don't need... No. But just has to relax before I take more K. How much K is left? K is in reference to the potassium chloride. A little less than half. Well, you know, initially I was very bravado. I said, yeah, I'm paralyzed, but I've been through this before, and that's great. And then we took it to another level where I, didn't, I never felt like that before. But the, I think what that was was not only was I paralyzed, but it was plus a wave of nausea. And, you know, you know how people freak out when they get nauseated, and I don't throw up that much. And I guess I didn't know what that sensation was, so I got scared. So I didn't know, is it the paralysis or what the hell is going on with my body? How bad is this going to get? When is this going to stop? Am I going to not be able to breathe? Am I really not going to be able to take the potassium by mouth? And then how long is it going to be to get IV potassium? Because paramedics probably don't have that. Note how his speech is labored. This is because his torso muscles are all paralyzed. He is a medical doctor, and at this point, he felt that if the attack was still worsening, he would want IV potassium in a hospital setting. If the attack were to bottom out, he would want to stay with oral potassium. The problem is that frequently, one cannot predict the direction the attack is going. This is classical hypokalemic periodic paralysis. There are a lot of atypical attacks where people just fall to the floor, they look like they're having a seizure, they twitch, they can't talk at all. Suddenly, uh, this happened gradually to me over a period of uh, minutes to hours. Um, some people, it happens in seconds. This attack ended up being much worse than anticipated. After the shooting of this video, the patient had to be taken by ambulance to the hospital due to impending respiratory failure and swallowing difficulty. The attack was resolved under professional medical care. This patient's intent on filming this episode was to capture something that may otherwise never have been documented.